Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. I'm Sean Petit, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome all new subscribers and all of those that continue to stick around and walk this crazy creative journey with me. Okay, today, first things first, I want to say that the membership doors, the Mixed Media Insider membership um, doors are still open for five more days. That gives you five days to jump into the free preview, check out all the content that is free to you for five days. Um, projects, skill builders, collage papers, all different kinds of stuff are is available on the free preview, including um, the the, my newest workshop, Bookish, which is not even released yet to the public. Um, and so this will give you a free preview, or it'll, you can do all the projects. It'll, it's going to give basically give you the workshop for free. So, and then if you like what you see, you can sign up. Um, and become an, a Mixed Media Insider member. We have a wonderful community um, and everyone shows their work and all of that kind of stuff, asks questions. There's new projects and oh, there's just all kinds of stuff. There's over two years worth of goodness in the membership. So that you have five more days for the open door. Um, <clears throat> what else did I need to tell you? I have put new collage papers in the subscriber library as well as the membership, but the subscriber library, it's a fall, like fall papers. Um, and it's in the fall collage paper section. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to tell you, but if I have forgotten anything, I will leave it down below in the YouTube description box. All the links or the link to the blog post that has the supplies and everything that I use today will be down below in the YouTube description box. Okay, I think that's it that I need to tell you. Uh, stencils that I use today will be on sale. That's it. I'm going to stop there and just dive into the project. Okay, so I have been a mad scientist since this whole wet strength tissue paper thing happened, I don't know what happened, but I have been like, I want specific designs. I want to be able to control the pattern. And so I have just been throwing paint around or mixing paint around or pouring paint around, um, trying to experiment to get see what's going to get me the best results. Now, I did two videos um, by the time you see this, uh, last week, the week, last week, I think it was, I can't, I feel my head. So, um, I'll leave the link to those two videos down below, and then I'll leave a link to last week's video in the end screen so that you can see what I did with some of those papers. Um, so it's probably a week and a couple of days ago, I did those two videos. So I experimented with a lot of options because I know extra wet strength tissue paper is not available right now, but I found some good options. And then I even ordered, <laughs> I even ordered another thing, which is tea bag paper. It's different than the one that Jane Monteith sells. I tried it, eh, not as good. So, but anyway, I've tried a gajillion things. But I woke up this morning, I woke up thinking about it. I, lo I love it and I hate it when that happens, but um, I love it when I wake up thinking about ideas and art and all of that. It just, it's just so good. But I wanted specific designs t in my work. I wanted to overlay these specific designs. So I came downstairs early and as I turned the camera on, I'm like, have I even put on makeup or anything? But it is what it is. So I think everybody understand what it, understands what it's like when you are like, you have this idea, you gotta do it. So um, I've been down here all day. It's almost dark and I have all of my ideas put together and I have found some really great things. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I am going to bring these over here. And I have, um, let me, okay, so I started out with these. Look at the pattern that I created with this. 
This is the heavier tea bag paper. It's okay, but it'll it'll still be a great collage paper. This is my favorite, you know, my wet strength tissue paper. Look at this. How gorgeous is that? This is Jane Monteith's um, tea bag paper, and it is it is the, the next best thing to the wet strength tissue paper. But look at what I have created. Um, this, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Same with this one. But these are some of the, this is some of the things that I was looking at. I want them to be a little bit lighter. Um, and you know, that's kind of as you're experimenting with whatever, whether it's a technique or new materials, whatever, it takes a, a second to get it right. And so I, I'm learning, okay, don't put as much down, wet it down a little bit more, etc., etc. Okay. So, yeah. yummy. So now, um, let's see, which ones did I do for you? I think it was this one. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. Okay, so I did these two for you so you could see what I have discovered. So I'll play that video now. So I um, have learned that I've got my, my silicone mat out, which is key, and I wet the silicone mat, then I put my tissue paper down and I scrunch it into the design that I want. I mean, it's not perfect, but it it gives me a really great a way to start creating pattern. And then I take some acrylic ink, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, and I brush over it and then I let it set. I do heat it because I'm too impatient. It works best if you just let it sit. But um, then once it's dry, I lift it off of the silicone mat and then you have this wonderful um, pattern of what's left over on the silicone mat. And those are my favorite. And I was like, how can I get those? Because they're dried. So I decided to try and put a coat of matte medium. Then I thought maybe I would do satin medium, but I did the matte medium first and it worked. So I could pick up the underneath, the dried pattern underneath, which is my favorite with the matte medium. Okay. So for my inks, I decided to water them, them down. It's best that way because I need lighter layers. So you can see how dark these are. And while that's great, I, I want a little bit lighter layer. They granulate out a little bit because I've added water to them. I love that. Um, and so plus it kind of breaks down the acrylic so that it's not so the papers don't stick together so much. Um, so I am really happy with this. So I just take my acrylic ink, squirt a couple of squirts in here, and then spray with some water and kind of mix it. To, and I can kind of mix it to see how thick it is. And so, um, it's really, it's really juicy. But uh, using acrylic ink, because it's so pigmented and fluid already, I don't lose too much of the intensity of the paper. So, um, and this is, just makes my heart happy. So, um, this is another one of those. Look at that. So that is the, let's see. This is the pickup of this. So it's like the ghost print, basically, <laughs> um, of this. Look at that. Hello. So I only wish I'd done this one on my wet strength tissue paper. This is the other brand of tea bag paper. It's too, th it's thicker. So we'll see how I'm going to play with them a little bit um, in my project. So <sighs> I have these that I'm going to be working with. And oh, this is another one. This is another pickup. Look at that! Okay, paper 
makes me happy. Okay, so there's another pickup. Look at that. Okay, sorry. Now, for my project today, this is a 12 by 16. Okay, and I'll zoom out. Once I start filming, I'll zoom out a little bit more so we can get the whole thing in there. Uh, that is... For the background, I have pulled out every bit of scrap that I've had on, I have on my desk. And I don't care what it looks like. It's neutrals for the most part. I won't I probably won't use some of these darker ones, but they're neutrals. And I want to layer the heck out of the background. Um, just over and over like that's an old check. That's funny. Um, layer and layer and layer. Uh, all back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm not worried about lights, darks, pattern, anything. I want texture. And because I'm not, I'm not worried about the papers because I know I'm going to be covering them up. What I'm looking for is texture. I want those interesting lines and things that happen when we put our papers down. Then um, I will, I'm, I've got I've got out here some numbers and some letters stencils, which will happen kind of down here in the bottom. I'm creating an abstract, abstract landscape, and my this is going to be my land and this is going to be my sky. I'm going to use, my plan is anyway, I'm going to use one of these trees as part of this. And I haven't decided if I'm going to put in a structure or not here. Um, like land and kind of tree, but I want the, it's going to be real abstract. Colors I'll be using will be um, sienna, and I have my inks out here because well, I probably will use what I've got left in here. I want lots of drips and things like that, grungy goodness, yes. Um, but but I want some of these layers to be somewhat light so that. I can then come back and lay in some papers to give me some really interesting pattern. Um, I will be using uh, Payne's Gray, um, Raw Umber, Sepia, Carbon Black or My Matte Black, um, Gesso, for my white, lots of gesso. I, I think those are the, oh, and some a little bit of olive green. I want a little bit of green kind of feeling in this area, not a ton. And I have, this is kind of the color that I'm looking for. I mixed olive green with um, some raw umber or carbon black. I don't remember exactly, um, but I thought some of this pattern might be interesting in here. So um, I have that as well. So I'm going to be working with my rule of thirds to divide my piece and this will be my land and this will be my sky. Um, I think that's it. So the stencils that I use today, these are the ones I'm planning on. You never know. Good go. And that is my ideas for today's project. Okay, so part of the reason I woke up thinking about my project was I had read the night before, uh, as I was kind of doing my quiet time and my journaling and stuff like that, um, I'm Morgan Harper Nichols. She's just, she just, uh, it just doesn't matter what season or where I'm at. I can open the book and turn the page and find something that will speak to me. But this really resonated with me. And it says, perhaps this is the season to step fully into the beautiful reality of what it means to be free. Brave and adventurous and ready for the journey of learning and growing of living and knowing. You do not have to have every answer to breathe deep and keep going. And I feel like when I read it, I was like, that's exactly where I feel like I'm at right now. 
Um, this whole year has been this kind of brave adventure of curiosity. And especially for, for me when I think about what I'm going to be creating, because oftentimes, because I'm doing video for you or for the membership or whatever, I'm constantly thinking about what everyone else would like. And really, honestly, this year I have I have done what has made my soul happy. And part of that is just trying everything. And some things weren't great and some things were. But what it has done has given me this incredible joy. Um, and her words were, so let me read, let me go back. So brave and adventurous and ready for the journey. So I don't really know what the journey is. But she says, we don't have to have every answer. I don't have to know exactly what I'm going to be creating. I have ideas, um, but being brave enough, one, to show up in front of you and, you know, maybe make a complete mess. I don't know. And But to show up for me and just try everything and really ignite this creative passion for me and watching my art and my ideas and how I think about how I create shift over this last year. And that has been an incredible, incredible thing for me, especially because I've been doing this for 10 years since, you know, I was just going back through some of my old work and I'm like, I'm not even that person anymore. And um, I, I hope it gives you permission to grow and learn and change and not worry about, well, that's not how I used to create or that's not what I used to do. And maybe you're finding that what you liked before isn't what you like now. And that could apply to anything in life, really. But I, I really, um, I don't have to have all the um, answers to breathe deep and keep going into this, into this journey of creativity. I don't have to have the answers, which is really hard for a type A planner personality. But I can feel that mentality shifting for myself. And so I want you to think about perhaps this season, you get to step fully into this beautiful reality of what it means to be free. I guess that's, maybe that's the biggest takeaway. I feel free to, to show up as I am and make a mess and try some of the craziest, I've tried some of the craziest things over this last year. <laughs> And I'm not done yet. I have so much more. I have stacks of ideas over here that I cannot wait to get to. And what a beautiful, beautiful thing that is as a creative and as an artist. And so I want you to be free in your creative process. I want you to be free in the journey of your life and and realize that we won't have the answers, but we can be courageous and brave and still move forward and keep going, even if we don't know what the outcome is. And that is my has been my journey this whole year. So I'm, I think that this piece will be titled, um, well, I'm not sure because there's so many, like, Living and knowing, learning and growing, breathe deep, keep going. I don't know. I'll have to, once I get there and I've, I've lived with it for, as, as, the, as I've created, maybe um, I'll have the answer for that. But some, one of those words will be, be the title. All right, my friends, I hope wherever, whatever season you're in, that you are living and growing and breathing deep into what you're learning and that you will be free to explore all things. All right, my loves, I hope you enjoy today's project. I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful, and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.